go. Get in there. Get in there. This your hey. podcast, baby. Hey. <laughs> go ahead, Stizzy. Hey. And, and, and how do they do that little, that little thing where they lay it out? I'm young... 40. I don't know. Uh-huh. I'm 40. I don't know. <laughs> This joint podcast, baby. Yes. Oh, we got a good one for y'all tonight. Come on. Yes. Uh, yes and yes. We got Miss Charvon Vincent in the Come house. Come on, Miss Charvon Vincent. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. We got Stizzy. Yo. In the house. <laughs> And of course, you know what I mean? Lost the Dark Gable. Come on, that's who it is. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Lost the Dark Gable. One more again. Lost the Dark Gable. There you go. With the deep boy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you got him. That very what? Hey, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, so. Episode 55. 55. We got the CEO of Art Amazing. Yes. Miss Charvon Vincent. No, I got to get another. Charvon. 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 Yes. There we go. <laughs> you know what I mean? I got more. Charvon. So what's going on, young lady? What's up? Good to be yeah. here. Yeah. Oh, my God. Me. Listen, I'm mm-hmm. glad you're here. It mm-hmm. finally happened. Yeah. Wait a minute. Let me get my, let me see. Y'all, what's y'all, going on with my mic? y'all see how we do. This I'm going to trip her do? up. Homework. I'm going to trip her up. You're so professional. Yeah. I, I do my homework, God damn it. Mm-hmm. I do my homework. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not. Go. Go. I, I'm go. not. You. You I'm are. You, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Right. Stizzy. Yo. She said she ready. Are you ready? Let me hear you say. She said she ready. <laughs> are you ready? Yes, Steady. I'm ready. Are you ready for a song? Are yes, you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> I don't know. That might be a little, a little, a little before my time. I don't know. Oh, mm. okay. We got that little young buck sitting go. over here, here in the chair. Go. Young She's buck, sitting, young buck sitting over here in the chair. Young chip. buck, my. Go ahead, baby. Go, baby. So, Miss Vincent, <laughs> tell us who you are. Yes, please. My name is Charbon Vincent. Mm-hmm. CEO, founder of Ultimism LLC, mm-hmm. mother, wife, social worker, in my heart, always. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you, thank you, yeah, thank you. Yeah. You got to project, you got to project that, project that. Mother, <laughs> wife, <laughs> social worker, <laughs> always. Oh, man, so, so how, how long have you been a social worker? I've been a social worker since I graduated from Virginia State University, VSU, Hell State. Uh-huh. <laughs> Don't start. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Do I got any B- VSU people S- out there? U. Don't play. <laughs> I started off in 2007 as a school worker. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh that's, old. Mm-hmm. That's, that's old school social yeah, work. That's real. Old that's old school. That's, old that's, school. that's, that's, that's the grind. That's, yes. That's yes. Go work. on the ground. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I ain't had no car. I was out here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Congre- mm-hmm. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You was out. You you was out in the streets. Yeah. Social working. Mm-hmm. With no car? Absolutely. Mm. I was hungry. I needed a job. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I had school loans to pay. Yeah. I ain't had no time Damn. to be bougie. Sh- shoes on a slant. No shoes on a slant. Listen, snow, rain, sleep. Mm-hmm. I was out there. Oh. Taking care of them kids. Mm-hmm. You know what? Well, listen, we... All our social workers, man, we we bless, we bless you and we thank you. Yes. You yes. know, for doing your due diligence. Yes. And more yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a thankless job. But yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. yes, it is. Yes, it's, it is. It's worth it. <clears throat> yes, it is. But now, now what are you doing? Now. I branched out on my own mm-hmm. in 2022. I left after 15 years of social work mm-hmm. to bet on me and to create a brand for my children who are on the autism spectrum. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to spread more awareness and acceptance of this particular population. Okay, okay, okay. So you start up a company called Alt Amazing, and I love that name. Yes, thank you. That thank name you. is popular. Yes, thank you. Why did you start that company? Please tell us. Well, 
My son, Maurice, was diagnosed. My son, Maurice, was diagnosed with autism a day after his third birthday. Okay. And a year and a half later, my daughter, Mariah, was also diagnosed with autism. Mm -hmm. So my husband and I were basically thrown into this world and I needed to find an outlet. I needed to shift my perspective from a place of depression, fear, and mm-hmm. worry into love, light, and possibilities. And I didn't want my children to see me feeling bad for them. Okay. Because okay. in turn, they would feel bad for themselves. And right. I didn't okay. want that. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And okay. I also realized that it was not enough resources, supports, for our children, the black and brown community, mm-hmm. particularly. So mm-hmm. I wanted to be a light to other mothers who may not know where to turn or what to do because I was at that place at one time and it was very scary. And it was, yeah. mm-hmm. it is, autism is a very lonely, isolating journey. And if you don't have a village or people around you that understand, Mm -hmm. Or that can at least be a beacon of light to say, hey, I've been there and it will get better. Mm -hmm. That in itself makes all the difference. And someone was that light for me. So I feel like it's my job to be that light for other mothers. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. 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 Mm -hmm. Good. Love it. That support. Because, you know, there's plenty of parents out here that need their support. Absolutely. Because and it's a lot of single mothers out here. They have children with autism Mm -hmm. and they just don't know where to go, who to turn to. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so often we do, you know, in the human services field, when we do um, certain uh, what is it called? The um, like the trainings. Um, and it speaks about, you know, the integrity of the um, medical field and how they really do not, you know, they'll give, you know, other races, you know, better care than they would give the black and the brown. Absolutely. It's mm. a disparity in resources. It's a disparity in the social service field, period. Mm-hmm. And when you talk about this particular population, it's even more devastating because I worked with teenage mm-hmm. autistic individuals in my last few years at my last employment and it was very disheartening and it really was one of the reasons that I left because I felt torn and I yeah, felt yeah. like I can't I have children these could be my children yeah mm-hmm. these could be my mm-hmm. babies mm-hmm. and I I I wouldn't I couldn't rest knowing that is just not enough. These children are just shuffled around the system and they age out and then they're homeless and they're on the streets mm-hmm. and they're being killed. They're being right. um, just shipped. They're, they're being incarcerated. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a there's a large number of autistic incarcerated individuals who should not be there. Mm-hmm. That's not the proper level of care for them. So now let me ask you, do we have programs throughout the, our city, which is Philadelphia? Big shout out to the Sixers, yes. And the big shout out to the Phillies, you know what I mean? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Big shout out to the Eagles. To the Eagles, of to course the Eagles. to the Eagles. The Flyers. You know what I mean? Hold up, wait, let me give them their flowers. Let me, wait, wait, let me, let me give them their flowers. You know what I mean? We've got the Sixers in the house. Tied it up, you know what I mean? Two games. You know, so, are, are there programs in the city for, for, the, for our autistic people? Uh, children as well as 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 let me say uh, parents you know me to to look for those awards there are however it's few and far in between and i feel as though and i and i feel like a lot of other autistic parents share this sentiment that you have to fight for everything Mm -hmm. literally Mm -hmm. everything it's it's a hard enough journey without you having to just always go to bat and go to war for the smallest things. Mm -hmm. So me having a background in social work, I was at an advantage because Mm -hmm. I was already familiar with the early intervention process. I knew about ChildLink. I knew about Elwin. I knew about SPIN. Um, I knew about Center for Autism. I knew about Elwin Seedlings, which is an autism-based preschool. Shout out to them because they are amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hold on, let me go. Let's give give them their flowers, y'all. Let's give them their flowers. in the house. Let's give them their flowers. (laughs) 
So there are there are agencies out there, but unfortunately, when you are when your child is first diagnosed, there you're literally given an evaluation that says your child has autism X Y Z. You need to mm-hmm. do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good luck. And mm. you're already in this whirlwind of emotions. You're confused. What's going on? You know, mm-hmm. we have this diagnosis. And then you are trying to find a light. You're trying okay. to figure out what's your next move because you're told you need to do X, Y, and Z for your child. So it is overwhelming. And it kind of reminds me of being in social work where we would have parent, we would give parents these plans to get their children mm-hmm. back and we would say okay we just took your kids we know it's hard but you got to get it together and you got to do yeah. all these mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. before we even consider giving your children back mm-hmm. and i just felt like it was too much and it was overwhelming i i think that the diagnosis is already hard enough mm-hmm. and you really i personally believe that it should be someone that connects with newly diagnosed parents mm. who can follow them for at least the first year mm-hmm. to see how they're doing how the child's progressing do they need any additional help and yes my child's development with pediatrician is is excellent however you only see them once a year unless it's an emergency oh, you don't really? really have someone there guiding you, can, you through okay. you okay. know all the ups and downs of it all mm. So what did the um what was the emotional toll on you? It was rough. It was really hard. Mm-hmm. Um I'm always completely transparent to people. I have this perspective now. I'm 3 years in, which mm-hmm. may not be a long time, but I am 3 years from where someone else is right. Yeah. Right yeah. Now. yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? For sure. Yes. So sometimes mm-hmm. we don't need somebody who's who who has done 10 years of something you just need somebody to say hey i was there Mm -hmm. i know it's hard right but it's going to get better Mm yeah yes yeah but in those in in those initial months my son was diagnosed a day after his third birthday and then the whole world went upside down our whole world was, that was turned upside the, the, down. the pandemic exactly mm-hmm. so we were our son was given his diagnosis in february and then march the whole world shut down so it was he was supposed to start school mm-hmm. in march and none of that happened he didn't start school till august so he did regress and we were i was buying everything i could find off of amazon mm-hmm. off of every yeah, therapeutic yeah. website mm-hmm. to do with him in home and Elwin did attempt to do uh, virtual therapy, which it just was not a good thing right. because oh, my son really? was three. First of all, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and who's sitting in front of right. a I'm a three year old? Yeah, you got this computer in front of me, and I'm not supposed to play no games. Right. Like, <laughs> so after a while, we just decided to like cut it down to a minimum because okay. Okay. it was causing him to have more meltdowns than anything. Right. Um, mm. but it was hard. It was it was particularly hard on my marriage. It was hard on me. Mm. I went into a depression. Um, I blamed myself. Yeah. I just I just didn't know and I didn't understand why why us. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. I blamed myself completely because as a mother, I think that mothers always carry the burden of if something is if something is wrong with our mm-hmm. child, then mm-hmm. it must have been something I did. Right. Mm-hmm. But it's not. It's just one of those things that happens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There is a genetic component, but I don't really know a lot about that to really start to say what's what. Yeah, I just yeah. know that at the end of the day, my kids have autism and they needed me. Mm-hmm. So I had to pull myself out of that dark that dark rabbit hole of autism that I went down because I was watching every YouTube video, to try to, mm-hmm. reading every yeah, book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there is no crystal ball. So no one can look at your child and say what they're going to do, what mm-hmm. they're not going to do, right. what they're never going to do. Mm-hmm. And I never allow anyone, not even their doctor, to tell me what my kids will and won't do. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. I don't even mm-hmm. know yes. that. So I don't put those 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 limits on my kids mm-hmm. and they just continue to flourish and grow. So now let me ask you, can autism be misdiagnosed? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. It could be misdiagnosed and it's undiagnosed a lot of times, especially in the black and brown community. Our children are wow. really 
Yeah, there are, I've I've seen a lot of cases of 13, 14, 15, 16 year olds mm-hmm. who never who are who just was who just got their diagnosis of autism. Wow. So a lot of times in girls particularly because girls present differently, mm-hmm. they are kind of like just passed down. Yes. They're pushed through because they can mask their symptoms more. Wow. Boys I think are not di- are not misdiagnosed as much as girls because most boys, I'm not going to say most, but a lot of times yeah. boys, they they present their symptoms very, like, you can't miss it. Like, you can mm-hmm. kind of look and be like, oh, yeah, something's going on. With yeah. girls, yeah. You, yeah. You, you, you just, sometimes it's harder. If our son wasn't diagnosed already, I probably wouldn't have thought that my daughter had autism. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, I have another. Now, is it true that people with autism have a different way of learning, moving, um, and or even paying attention, I would say yes. Um, but I think that overall, I think all people, because we're different, we yes. all have different yeah. ways of paying attention and things like that. But absolutely, because most of the time they have some kind of sensory needs, mm-hmm. okay, that, or sensory mm-hmm. sensitivities that get in the way of maybe like they have a sensitivity to loud noises, okay, right. okay. or like my son, he especially when he was a younger, he he needed a lot of um, deep pressure. So that would help calm him down and help him be able to um, soothe himself. So we would give him tight hugs, or we would buy oh. like um, I bought a weighted blanket, yeah, or a yeah. compression vest, mm-hmm. um, things like that to accommodate. Just to because their system is like overwhelmed, and he mm-hmm. gets over overly uh stimulated. stimulated a lot. Okay, okay. So he can he might not be able to concentrate on what the teacher is saying because he just he he just he can't he's just fidgety. So he, the teacher will give him a fidget spinner mm-hmm. or okay. mm-hmm. a vest and that will help him to be able to focus more. Mm. Mm, that's amazing how it's yeah. just the smallest things that can get a a, um, a person to focus. Like mm-hmm. sometimes I yeah. need focusing. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly because I feel like we all got some autism in us because mm-hmm. I like we all have these things about us that mm-hmm. help us get through certain stressful situations or we like things a certain way mm-hmm. and when things aren't that way it like it might send us into you know, having an attitude or yeah, right, yeah. right. We mm-hmm. can't focus because our desk isn't a certain way or mm-hmm. things like that. So it's just exacerbated with children on the spectrum, I think. Yeah. And you know what it seems, you know, when when I was young, I mean I don't know if you ladies are as old as I. How old no, is we're that? not. Yeah. None of your business. Okay, well. But I'm sure. I'm, I'm proud, sure. I'm, I'm sure a proud we are. 52. Yeah. Okay. Well, I oh. just turned 40. Oh, so. Oh, man, y'all old. But. <laughs> <laughs> let me, can I get what you talking about, Pop Pop? Let me get my chest right there. No. Let me get my class right there. Ooh, oh, so corny. Whatever. But wah, wah, wah. <laughs> you know, it seems like, you know, when I was young, you, you really didn't hear about autism. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You know what I mean? So, I. I mean, I don't know if it was a community thing because I I grew up in the ghetto. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, it, you know, maybe it wasn't. <sighs> no, it wasn't be, as prevalent. As no, prevalent, exactly. Years yes. ago, the statistics were one in five hundred. But you know what they they called it back in the day. No offense to anybody. It wasn't. You know, now we say um, intellectually disabled. Back then, they used mm-hmm. to say, "Oh, she's or he is retarded." Mm-hmm. You Mentally see what I'm retarded. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, okay. and a lot of times those type of individuals were institutionalized. Yes. They were put away mm-hmm. into these private um, asylums mm-hmm. and things like that, mm-hmm. away from the community. I think in the last maybe 20 years, they they are, it has gotten a lot better. I'm not going to say that right. it is terrible because I know that in the past it, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it was a lot worse. Mm-hmm. Um now I think because autism is more prevalent and is being diagnosed more, that's because it's being okay. it's in people's faces more. More, mm-hmm. yes, yes. So now, how do you deal with a, a, a meltdown? Mm-hmm. Good question. <laughs> so my son has more. 
I would say severe meltdowns than my daughter. My daughter okay. has regular little tantrums. She can, she's very uh, redirectable. So if mm-hmm. you, if, mm-hmm. sometimes a lot of a lot of kids with autism, they have a hard time with transitioning from preferred activities to non-preferred. Right. So if yeah. my son has, if he wants the tablet that his sister is, and he'll just take it. And then we'll have to, you know, redirect him and say, no, you know, that's not yours. You have to give it back. And then he may have a tantrum and fall out and start screaming and things like that. And we'll just calmly talk to him and tell him, you know, you can't have it. Yeah. But we were we were instructed by the doctor, you know, just to kind of ignore the behavior, because once you give it attention and my son is very smart, so he knows. <laughs> does that work? Yes, it does. It does? Because when we walk away, he look up, and then he'll follow us and start crying again. <laughs> like, y'all not about to ignore him. Uh, I, I, I got to give it to him. I got to give it to the young boy. <laughs> like, nah, I don't know where you think you going. Right, I'm going to follow Well, you going to catch this tantrum, Mom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I think, I think that because he is aware that in itself, mm-hmm. I don't. It's easier to not feed into it because okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, so you know that we're ignoring you, but you want the attention. It's just mm-hmm. like any kid. Bad attention, good attention is mm-hmm. still attention. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you ignore the behavior, it stops. Oh, <laughs> you know what? Maybe I, I need I need to start throwing some more attention tantrums. Mm-hmm. Like. I'll ignore you like I've ignored my kids. No, you won't. Like, you, no, you no, won't. No, no, no. Gonna pay attention to me, my man. Damn it, my mm-hmm. man, <laughs> my man. <laughs> so now I'm I'm, I'm curious because um, I, I didn't want to research this, but I want to ask you this question. Um, now, are there any research that shows which parent carries the autism gene? There is. I've heard that it is. From the father's side. Oh. I knew it was But done. there isn't enough research. <laughs> there Shut isn't enough mouth. research to support <laughs> that. Yeah. And yeah. I don't really get into that because I feel like does it it's like the whole vaccine conspiracy thing. Mm-hmm. Yes. People think mm-hmm. that vaccines lead to autism when that's just not true because there's plenty of people on the spectrum who are unvaccinated. Mm-hmm. I know mm-hmm. parents who did not get their children vaccinated, particularly the MMR vaccine, which I think a lot of people try to say is linked to autism. Mm-hmm. But if there's people if there's children who haven't had it, then what? True. So mm-hmm. I don't really get into that. Um I know that they do genetic te- they offer genetic testing. Mm-hmm. Um but I'm really not interested in it because I feel like at this point doesn't matter. They have it. And like, and, is it going to help? Right. It's yeah. not. Yeah. So I have to focus my energy on helping my kids, increasing their life skills, mm-hmm. helping them, you know, with be in this world that is very overwhelming for them at times. Okay. So, um, in regards to your husband, like, you know, we oftentimes only focus on the mothers, you know, the women. Um, is there anything that you want to do with the men? Because they they hurt, too. And I, I know the, the new millenniums yeah. of today, um, they love their kids. I was just, you know, commending um, the men that I've dealt with. Like, you know, I commend you young men for you know participating in your child's life for actually being mm-hmm. a, a, a actual father you mm-hmm. know what i mean not just a, a donor oh you boy know you know, hey, listen thank yeah. you thank you oh boy absolutely <laughs> well my husband is amazing mm-hmm. yeah. and that's my I boy very yeah yeah blessed. yeah shout out yeah hey, that's my boy right there that's my boy <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> it's the maurice yeah. Yeah, shout out to him because he's a great father period Mm -hmm. before we had children together he had two children already and he was helping me raise my daughter and i already saw that in him so Mm -hmm. i knew Mm -hmm. that he was never going to abandon his children willingly Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he has stepped up to the plea and been my backbone and my anchor Mm -hmm. throughout Mm -hmm. this journey and we support each other but i know that we we deal with it differently yeah Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. he is really big on 
being involved. He's very, he's the fun dad. He, <laughs> our kids. I mean, of course, we all, let me tell you something, the fathers are always the yeah, fun dads. I just dads. told him that. <laughs> I said it must be nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, I, like, right? Kevin, like Kevin Hart is saying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't see the mamas. They don't, no, they don't want to be, nah. Mm-mm. Father's always the fun dad. Mm-hmm. So he has Time a really, play. he has a really, a really good bond and relationship with all his children, and especially the two little ones. They, mm-hmm. they love their dad. I mm-hmm. mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, they have their own routine. They have their own little language. They have their own little jokes, and it's really heartwarming. <laughs> and I always say, I, I don't know what I would do without him. He mm-hmm. really makes this journey yeah. a lot easier because mm-hmm. he is really good with seeing that if I'm if I'm having a difficult time or if I need some time to my own, he'll be like, all right, I got the kids. He'll pick up the slack. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. go out, Mm -hmm. hang out, or he'll just be like, I'm going to take the kids to the park for a few hours. You stay home and take a bath or do whatever. whatever. And Mm -hmm. I really appreciate that because it really does help. Give my man the roses. (laughs) Give my man man the roses. (laughs) I, I knew I liked them. I like them right, for right. <laughs> Shout out to Maurice, my yeah. honey. My honey. Well, you know, I mean, with us men, I mean, you, the I ain't gonna lie. As, as a man, the conflict that I go through mm-hmm. is, I I I think that I'm hard on my kids. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I I got a, I got a son and a daughter, and I be like, oh man, am I too hard? Am I too hard on them? It's a but balance. I want them to be. I, I want them to learn the way of life. You know, I, mean? I want them to, I don't want them to be oblivious to what's mm-hmm. going on out here in these streets. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I want them to be prepared because I'm not going to be around. Right. Mm-hmm. Forever. You know, mm-hmm. Yeah, forever. Mm-hmm. So I, I want them to be prepared. You know what I mean? And, Absolutely. And the one thing that, oh man, I, I just melt like butter. Mm-hmm. When when I when my daughter be when she be crying, oh daddy, I pray for you. I was like this, yo, I melt like butter, cause I be like, oh my god, I be yo, am Wait, I hard on this say? girl? Why she be like, she be like, daddy, I pray for you, cause you, oh could, my goodness, cause you know, listen, I got my wisdom tooth pulled, so I got this hole in my mouth, oh. and she be like, oh my daddy got a hole in his mouth. I be like, this, you don't need to be telling everybody that. You know? Get it, peanut. But that's my peanut though. That's my peanut though. But I'm I'm hard on her because. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, I I I feel as though that as I want her to grow up to be a well balanced woman. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, to know how to cipher through the BS mm-hmm. that us mm-hmm. men give, because mm-hmm. us men we can give some BS. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you no, know, because we're men. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, I, I'm I a don't think bunga. There's no excuse. But <laughs> no, that's, we I gotta will, put on the agree. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, I want her to be. Yeah. Daughters are a man's karma. Mm-mm. Yes, mm-hmm. and that you better talk it. <laughs> you you can it, it it just has to be a balance in my opinion. You know, yeah. mm-hmm. because I didn't grow up with that father's love that my daughters are getting. Right, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I know all the things that I all the unnecessary pain and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. dog behind men <laughs> that I had to deal with. To get to this version of myself. Oh, yourself, mm-hmm. yes. And mm-hmm. a lot of that wasn't necessary had I had a man saying, hipping, you know, schooling me to the game. You're right, right. Maurice does a, ver- a very good job of that with our with our daughters. He mm-hmm. is very transparent with them. He'd be like, listen, I was a I was a F boy out here in these streets when I was a young boy. Like I was wild. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I can't don't, see that. don't listen. <laughs> But he was always. You he, can't see everybody. I, can't I mean, see, see us men. We, I can't see that. See, and you, us men, we gravitate to to good no, men like yo. That's my homie. That right? That's you know, my like, boy. I right? Can you see that you look. You see it in me? Yes. <laughs> Not Maurice. Well, you a young boy. Can I cut you know, her you camera? Just, you just, you just <laughs> thinking yeah. and moving, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And he, he, he tells our daughters that like these young bulls, they don't. They don't love you. Like, they don't move mm-hmm. the way us they, and they and, us they, old and heads it's so different. It's so mm-hmm. different. It is. And you don't want them to be taken advantage of. But the reality is they gotta make their own mistakes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just like we had to learn and grow. Mm-hmm. But it's like you don't want them to make those mistakes that they can't come back from. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So exactly. it's a fine line you gotta walk. And I think mm-hmm. that the worry that most that all parents have regarding that is real. 
Mm-hmm. But I know when your child not just has autism, but any special need, mm-hmm. it is compounded with a lot of worry and stress because I have a daughter and a son. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't want my daughter to be taken advantage of because somebody sees that she may not have a full understanding of things. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have to teach her differently, but I know that she's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. So n- now, can children who have autism grow up to be productive adults? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I volunteered over the last summer with um, Work Ready. They had a program for autistic teenagers. Okay, okay. And the woman that ran the group, she has an autistic son. He's 28, I believe. And he works in City Hall. Okay. And he works mm-hmm. in the Office of Disabilities. Okay. Help as a peer, as a peer mentor to other adults on the spectrum. Mm. Helping he drives. You know, autistic people, they get married, they hold mm. employment. Wow. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. it's not a disability, it's a different ability. Come on now. Oh, 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 Say it again. That's not mine, but you know, I heard that somewhere. Still it. And it really Still it. that's yours it really, tonight. It really struck with me because mm-hmm. that's true. Mm-hmm. It, it it really is true. And it's all about perspective. And when I changed my perspective, it it changed the it changed the whole way that I viewed autism in my children's future. Because mm-hmm. on a serious note, mm-hmm. um the worry is real. Mm-hmm. And I'm if sure you it is. are an autism parent, not just mom, parent, mm-hmm. caregiver, someone who loves and takes care of an autistic individual, the worry is suffocating sometimes. Yes. Yes. I mean, I, I don't know how many nights I was just, I lost sleep, just yeah. Yeah. thinking, crying, worrying myself sick about what's going to happen when my husband and I are not around. Mm-hmm. I don't want, you know, my son is consider nonverbal, but I say preverbal because I'm claiming it. Thank you. Amen. Amen. And eat some flour? he will speak. He does speak and he will speak and he mm-hmm. will be great because yeah. Yeah. that is what I breathe into him and mm-hmm. my daughter. And I I had to shift my perspective because it's that it's the only option I had. Okay. I felt mm-hmm. like if I didn't, then how is that being beneficial to my children it's mm-hmm. not and it's, it's a lot of parents who can't handle the pressure and mm-hmm. they aren't able to navigate the system like i am because they don't have they may have their own um situations going on that they don't have the ability to even advocate for their child because they got their own needs or they don't have a village i have an mm-hmm. amazing mother mm-hmm. i have sisters i have family who love and support my children who make this journey easier Right. But the reality is not every parent has, has that. that yeah. mm-hmm. So what advice would you give to a parent for self-care? Breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Breathe, mama. Take it yes. in. Just yeah, just yes. sit back. It's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Literally breathe, doing some some deep breathing. It really is, it sends oxygen to your brain. It mm-hmm. calms you down. Mm-hmm. But self-care is one of those things when you're an autism parent, it's like, yeah, right, self-care. But you have to make it a priority right. because we are the anchors in our children's lives. Mm-hmm. We have to have the energy, the stamina to keep up with not only them, but to fight yeah, yeah. the systems for mm-hmm. all that our children need. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. you have to, Some lots of parents have to file lawsuits with the school really? district or other agencies. Mm-hmm. Yes, just because they don't these kids aren't getting what they need and if you don't have a parent to call it out, mm-hmm. they'll just they'll just keep on keeping on with it. But it's exhausting sometimes because it's like, damn, like I'm tired. I'm not getting wow. no sleep. Mm-hmm. Like let's let's really talk about it. Children on the spectrum, they suffer with insomnia. They mm-hmm. they have some some of them have a hard time falling asleep, staying asleep. Mm-hmm. So you're talking about you're not getting a lot of sleep sometimes, and then you're up early, 
and then you're dealing with the behaviors of your child and then your child is not getting the supports they need and then you have to fight for everything for every, wow. and then you have to take care of yourself mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is not always easy but i would say i started with just walking around my neighborhood walking around my neighborhood um just choosing better things to eat which okay. directly affected my energy mm-hmm. supplementing with herbs and different things that gave me energy and doing things that I like to do, doing things that reminded me I'm not just a mom. I'm yeah. not just mm-hmm. a wife. I'm a person. And I was right. someone before I had these children. And I'm still, and that person deserves to be happy and have, you know, mm-hmm. things that you deserve to do things that make you happy. You don't yeah. have mm-hmm. to yeah. be mm-hmm. bogged down with everybody else's stuff and you're not doing anything for you Mm -hmm. so my advice would be to just find those things that you like to do that you find joy in even if it's just taking a good book and going to the park while your kids is in school and reading it going to a Mm -hmm. nice coffee Mm -hmm. shop you know going to your favorite store buying yourself some perfume or just taking a bubble bath and Mm -hmm. cutting your phone off Putting on do not disturb some some, some me time. Yes, yes. exactly. That's because you have to be able, you have to rejuvenate. I have to mm. replenish myself to be my best self for my family. Mm. Yeah, that's good. That's mm. a, yeah, I mean, that's my home girl. That's good. That's my home girl. Mm. Gotta give it to. Her. But it's not easy. It's not easy. I have an amazing husband. Mm-hmm. Okay, so a lot of people don't. Wait, have that's my home that. boy. Yeah. <laughs> but I, but I, but last summer my daughter wasn't in daycare which is a whole nother story but her aba therapist would come to the house and we would go to parks and i found a nice park that had a track so what i did was i let the aba therapist entertain my daughter at the playground and i put my airpods in and i just walked around the just track and, mm-hmm. and that was my time mm-hmm. so it's not realistic to always have an hour or two right. hours to yourself right. i get that so we have to get creative with how we spend our time. Mm. So you know that your child has to get the therapy, but if you find somewhere that can accommodate your child and you can do something else, then you kill in two birds with one stone. So now are there different type well, I'm sorry, Deuce Sis, you got you got a question before? I- Cause I'm out. I'm out. I'm, I'm a Listen, runner. you on the roll. But- <laughs> I want to roll because I mean I need to know. I'm going. Are, are there different types of <laughs> autism? So autism is a spectrum. It's called autism spectrum disorder. Okay. And it's a spectrum. So they don't use low and high functioning anymore. Mm-hmm. But for the sake of the podcast, I'm going to use high, low and high. Okay. So there are, so Asperger's is a part of autism. And that is considered the higher end of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. And... There are individuals, because the needs vary so much, you may have a person who cannot speak, they cannot toilet, they cannot walk, Mm -hmm. Um, they literally need everything done for them. So, now, I don't mean to keep going, cut you, but now, is the, what what they say, the the, the tick, people who have the tick, is that... On, on like the Tourette's? spectrum, yeah, like like Tourette's. I, I don't think so. You don't think? Oh, okay. No, I'm, I was just curious. I was just yeah. curious. But people who are on the spectrum, like, so my son, he has, um, so he may he may do this thing like in front of his eye, mm-hmm. it's like this, or he may flap his hands. Sometimes you may see children do that. That's like a sensory related, but it's not a tick per se. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because uh-huh. I noticed that. Um, even though they didn't diagnose my daughter with um, uh, Asperger's, but I, you know, the signs are there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And but her hands shake all the time, mm-hmm. like just mm-hmm. for no reason. Like it just shakes. Like when she go to grab something, it's, it's shaking. But when she grabs it, it doesn't shake anymore. But her, it's like a nervousness in her hands. Mm-hmm. So I brought it to the doctor's attention, but. I'm about to handle my scandal with them because I'm so fed up as many years as I have been complaining. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Even with the school district, it's like the teachers are like, oh, not our, you know, not our black and brown kids. (laughs) They don't don't label them. 
No. Well, do, do they it, have programs in school? So the counselors, um, when you <coughs> when you write a letter and say, I need my child to be evaluated, they a lot of the t- teachers um, chose not to move that letter on because they're like, serious? Well, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, come oh, on no. now. Serious? Oh, no. Come you on. need an attorney. Let's talk after. Um, Exa- no, no, no. Done. So I've been there and done that. We we sued. Yes, we did. Good. And what happened was when she was in like the seventh or the eighth grade, they were literally trying to fail her. And I was like, so I sent a nice, nasty email. Very professional. I'm good with my emails. Mm-hmm. And it was vicious. Yes, and I was like, you will not <laughs> fail my daughter when I said several years ago and put in the letter Please evaluate her. But they only s- discovered the ADHD, but not the Asperger's. But I believe, mm. I know for a fact she's on the higher end of Asperger's. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it's just getting to know your child. Mm-hmm. And a lot of parents, they be like, oh, sit down, shut the F up, you know what I mean, or whatever. But they don't realize that there is something else going on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Wow. So it's like now, you know, you have when you see it, you have to. It's like if you know that parent really doesn't understand what's going on, you have to talk to that parent mm-hmm. and like, listen, these are signs of such and such, such and such. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And it's, it's, it's hard for them to grasp it because they want them to be so to speak normal kids right, you know what which, i mean what is that yeah and you know and that's yeah. what my my daughter's father cannot handle this you know what i'm saying like he's on a whole different spectrum of himself he's like you know no ain't nothing wrong with you you ain't got it but my daughter accepts it you know being what I mean? in denial does not help our children no anymore. it does not it does well, well you know what i mean how do you pick up on the on on the signs or or, or let me let me ask you this I mean, because I'm I'm jumping my questions here because we mm-hmm. when we rolling on this topic. <laughs> you personally, what did you see to me? Say, you know what? I got I have to get my child tested. So with my son, because he's the oldest, when he was around a, a year and a half, he had some words, and then all of a sudden he they just he, they they just went away. Mm-hmm. Like he mm. would not use the words that I knew he had. Mm -hmm. So I started teaching him baby sign language from YouTube. I taught myself and then I would teach him different signs, simple signs for like eating, drinking, things like that. Mm -hmm. And then I went and I spoke to his pediatrician and I expressed my concerns. You know, I'm like, something's going on. You know, I know that by one and a half, I already had a daughter. So I know that he should have been. And all kids Mm -hmm. are different. But I know that by a year and a half, he should should be more Mm -hmm. words. Okay. Right. So no slight against her because his pediatrician is amazing, but hey, Mr. She, Mark. she also she was just kind of like nonchalant about it. Like, well, let's wait and see, um, you know, wait and see until he's two and then we can, you know, revisit it then. And my husband was the same way. He was like, well, you know, he's still young. So let's just wait. But me, I'm not a wait and see type of yeah, person. Right. I know mm, that time mm. is of the essence, especially when you're talking about a child's development. Mm, when a child's mm. brain develops 75 percent by age five, okay. right? You okay. have mm-hmm. to get on it. So I, being having a social work background, I already was familiar with the child links and the partnerships and the L wings. Yes. Mm. So yeah. I just mm-hmm. called them. I said, "Man, forget what that lady's talking about. I'm a call." And I called, they came out, they did the assessment. They said he did have a delay that he qualified for speech, occupational therapy, and something called special instruction. Mm-hmm. So he had been receiving early intervention for a year and a half before he was diagnosed with mm. autism. Wow. Okay. And we didn't know it was autism at the time, but he kept having ear infections. So he had to get tubes in his ears. So I'm like, well, maybe he's not talking because, because of, he couldn't of like hear. an ear infection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then he still wasn't talking and then previous to that he had a lip and tie tongue that had been corrected when he was three months old so i'm like well maybe that didn't heal properly and maybe that's yeah. why he's not talking but then when we finally got the diagnosis um they said it was autism and even though it was hard to hear in my heart i already knew mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. but it was still it was still difficult um, to hear because as a parent, you never want, you know, you, we want our children to we want our children to have the best chance because mm-hmm. we know what's out here. We know how difficult mm-hmm. life is mm-hmm. when you don't have mm-hmm. um, challenge, you know, neurological challenges. Mm-hmm. So 
I by the time my daughter was diagnosed at a year a year and a half later, I had already got her early intervention services also. Okay. Mm -hmm. So which made all the difference. I am a huge, huge advocate for the earlier the better. Yes. Don't yes. wait. And the more, first yes. sign of worry, trust your mother's guilt. Your not guilt. Gut. <laughs> your mother's <laughs> gut. gut. Yeah. And sometimes it's the father. The father trust your instinct. As a parent, yes. I feel like you can never go wrong when you're trusting your gut. Mm -hmm. If you feel like something is wrong with your baby, then get the assessment. It can't yeah, hurt because right. all they can say is, yes hey, no. it's not any delays. We're not seeing anything. And if you don't agree, you can get a second opinion. Yeah. But you don't want to wait and then miss that time that they could have been learning and growing and gaining oh. those skills mm -hmm. because they're going to lose That's out. Yeah. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So now... Uh, how do they test for autism? You have to, it's a it's a psychological test. And okay. when a child, so my kids were very young. They were three when they got diagnosed, which is on the, it, there are some kids that are diagnosed younger than that. But mm -hmm. typically I think three is the, is the range that most kids are diagnosed that the parents that I talk to, that's around okay. the age, okay. the age range. Because I feel like that's the age when kids are starting preschool. And that's when you really see the difference right. in the in the developmental delays mm -hmm. compared to other three-year-olds who are some are potty trained talking yeah, yeah. you know things mm -hmm. like that um so they do a series of testing through play therapy because they're little kids yeah so they test on you know their fine motor skills their gross motor skills putting puzzles or blocks stuff like that um play their imaginary play, mm -hmm. their pretend play. So like playing with um like you might see a little a little girl with a baby trying to feed it. That's considered pretend play. Oh. Um joint joint attention. So it's like me and you, we got a ball and we rolling it back to each other. That's joint play. Mm -hmm. That's a huge thing for children on the spectrum because a lot of them struggle with sharing or just like playing with other people right oh okay so a lot mm -hmm. of the testing is on those type of things and then they test cognitive abilities and things like that but they don't really do a lot of iq testing at that age because it's really hard especially because my son was nonverbal. Mm -hmm. um but he was diagnosed with autism and expressive and receptive language disorder. Okay. Which okay. is expressive is what you speak and receptive is what you understand. So my son always had a better grasp of receptive skills. Mm. So he understands more than he's able to express. Wow. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it does. Yeah. Um, which I think is a great thing because it could be both he, he could yeah. he could struggle both mm -hmm. so he understands if i say maurice you know get your cup wipe up the juice and put it in the sink he's gonna do that because he understands he may not be able to say hey mom my stomach is killing me mm -hmm. but he's gonna come up to me and rub his, rub stomach. his stomach okay and what i learned because i was i was obsessed with verbal communication but non-verbal communication is just as important as verbal because yeah. pointing is nonverbal waving is nonverbal a thumbs up is nonverbal signaling um saying like holding this is like, all nonverbal yeah. mm -hmm, me mm -hmm. pulling your arm to something that i want is nonverbal and i think that as parents sometimes with children on the spectrum we we don't we don't always focus on that as much as we should Okay. Because one is the stair is the step to the other. You need nonverbal to become verbal. So I just I personally and my husband we try to um, focus on their strengths mm -hmm. and then help them where they have some deficits. But both of my kids are on the spectrum, but they're completely different individuals. Yeah. One, they're oh. completely different anyway. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. One's a girl, one's a boy. Mm -hmm. They have different strengths, different weaknesses. But I always say that my daughter Mariah, she's verbal. She is my son's voice until he finds his own. His own. Oh, because they have yeah. such a bond. Yes. Yeah. 
They're real they, close. They, they have they they are close, but they fight like cats. <laughs> <laughs> Man, they how, siblings. That's how you know they live. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they only fifteen months apart, and my daughter is the youngest, but she is the mother. <laughs> and my son be like, chill, shorty, like. <laughs> <laughs> so we're now let's talk about early diagnosis. And now, at what age shall parents test their children? I don't think there's specifically a age because, mm-hmm. again, some parents don't see the signs or okay. some okay. medical professionals may miss the signs mm-hmm. because all children present differently. Right. So you may have a kid that doesn't that doesn't have any symptoms that ring off any alarms. OK, so they may I've seen I've seen people. Go their whole lives and never be diagnosed. I mean, grown, oh, grown people. So I, I'm an advocate for the earlier the better. That's my motto mm-hmm. with everything. Mm-hmm. And my son was diagnosed at three, but he was on the wait list for a year because that's another problem. Yes. There aren't enough places yes. that do these evaluations. Mm-hmm. There are only about five that I could count on the top of my head. And you're talking about Is that within Philadelphia? Yes. Mm-hmm. And it all goes by insurance. So your insurance company, they have to take your insurance. You know, not everybody, if it's out of network, then... Yeah. Yeah. I, I was about to ask yeah. that. Can you, are you able to go out no. of the network? Mm-mm. Now, what about you out, of, out of the city? You can, pay, you can pay out of your pocket for an evaluation, but it's thousands of but dollars. Oh, my Lord. Are you people serious? People don't have that. It's you know, they don't have thousands dollars just laying around and if they do they can't really afford to spend it on an evaluation that may not say you know what I mean so Mm -hmm. we had put our son on the wait list for CHOP and for Center for Autism and he was evaluated at both I let him get evaluated at CHOP first they diagnosed him and then I got a second opinion from Center for Autism and it's it took a year with my daughter it was easier because with CHOP if you have a sibling that's already being seen in the developmental clinic, mm-hmm. then their doctor, who we love, she she just she just was like, well, just just um, send me an email and I'll have my scheduler put it on the calendar. Okay. And mm-hmm. they got her in quicker. Mm-hmm. But a lot of parents, they you have to wait nine months, a year, and that's a long time to worry. Mm-hmm. It's a long mm-hmm. time because in that, but in that time, I feel like that's the time that you can utilize the early intervention services. You can yeah. utilize, mm-hmm. you know, research and read books, talk to other parents to get some strategies, do the things that while 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 you wait. Mm-hmm. Because I'm working on a book while you wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gotta get the plug it's right there. Out. You gotta get the plug right there. <laughs> Amazon bestseller. Amazon best. <laughs> so during that during that year, I wasn't just sitting around thinking, "Oh, well, what's wrong?" I yeah. was being proactive, and mm-hmm. I know it's not easy, um, but for me, it was it would it would have been harder to be in denial or to turn a blind eye to it and watch my child continue continue to um, the deficit in their development get bigger. So I'm always an advocate for the earlier the better. Not every state has the same resources, has the same access to resources. We're fortunate. Philly may not be the best, but it is a lot better than a lot of places. Yes, Uh-oh. and that's a true yeah. story. There right are there. horror stories. I mean, pl- mm-hmm. places what? that don't have one place. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. people that have to move to another state mm-hmm. just to just so their child can just, have for resources? resources. For resources, yes, yeah. schools, mm-hmm. preschools. You know, Elwin mm-hmm. Seedlings is an autism based preschool. Shout out to them again because mm-hmm. they are the best. Give them some right there. Give them right there. <laughs> Give them right there. But that's a privilege. It's a privilege yeah. to live in a place where we don't have to pay for that. Our insurance doesn't have to like we they we don't have to pay for that out of pocket. It's a lot of mm-hmm. you know child link partnership. Elwin, those are the mm-hmm. things that we don't you don't have to pay for out of pocket. And every state should have a early intervention program that is free for all parents. So if you have a child and you have concerns about their development, autism or not, if you have any concerns about your child's development, please Google your state's early intervention yeah. number. Jump and on it. Reach that. out to them. Mm-hmm. And if your if where you live don't doesn't have any, I don't know. You may have to um, reach out to an attorney, maybe to 
find some other resources that may be near where you live. Mm-hmm. But I know I know people actually have to relocate for those things. Just for those Just services. For those things. So are you gonna branch out? Like Ooh, yeah. are you starting in counties? Would you wanna start, you know, in counties, then move out you to might, different states? You might like have to get you, into politics. Because they need you. <laughs> Get into politics. Let's come up with the with the with the question question. <laughs> Listen, automize, oh, automazing is amazing, and yeah. they need you to automize out there. They do. <laughs> they really do. And mm-hmm. I, my 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 plans, my vision for automazing are really big. I mm-hmm. really, I'm an empath by nature, so I always mm-hmm. want to. And I'm and I'm always a, and I'm always going to be a social worker. Being a social worker is not just what you get paid for it's, yes it's, it's a life you. it's a lifestyle it's a lifestyle it's a lifestyle it's a lifestyle you know what i mean hey, it's a lifestyle it really is because i'm doing social work now mm-hmm. i'm doing exactly. social work every day yep talking to parents mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and i cannot emphasize how important it is for each and every one of us mm-hmm. to just Sometimes you just got to be a listening ear. Mm-hmm. Sometimes yeah. mm-hmm. I don't want to hear that it's going to, you know, sometimes yeah. I don't want to hear all that. Right. I just I just want you to listen to me. Mm-hmm. Let me cry or let me mm-hmm. say what I got to yeah. say. Let and you have your moment. Yeah, let oh, me yeah, have yeah. my moment. You know, mm-hmm. have you noticed, you know, it's always that the family members that call you, <laughs> you know, like, oh, ah. Son, 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 you know, I just, oh my God, I must be the family social worker again. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. But then they always hit you with the line, stop trying social work. <laughs> you call me. You call me. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You, you call me. Listen, listen. And listen, you don't want to hear all the time that, you know, um, shout out to God, yeah. our Father, in the name of Jesus. But you don't, sometimes you don't want to hear that. God got you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jesus yeah. going to, no, mm-hmm. let me have my moment. Let me share. Jesus my ain't taking kids. the world today. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's very true. Oh, and well, I, and I'm very, I'm highly spiritual. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I do know that sometimes it's just hard. Yes. It's yes. just hard, yes. you know? Mm-hmm. And, that's okay. And mm, for a long is. time, I felt guilty saying that. But it's okay. Mm. It is. It's okay to admit that the shit is hard <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> you know, oh, my man. Oh, look, my, my man Reese, look at this. It's such a great interview. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super proud of you, honey. Oh, thank you. Give it a hands. Give it a hands. Give it a hands. Give it a hands. Look, he over there. Yeah, we see, we see you lurking. <laughs> Somebody's watching me. We see you lurking, Reese. His name is Maurice. Oh, oh, oh. Always, always, always. He always lurking. Always. That's right. He loves. He loves his me. wifey. Yeah, That's he love. He love his wifey. And it, it is. It is a great thing. Hey, listen. Y'all look when when we interview Maurice. Mm-hmm. So he called he called the wifey after the interview. She said, <laughs> "Boy, you cursing too much." She got on. She got in his shit. I did not. Yes, you did. Oh my goodness! How you, you going to do that in Or exaggerating? It, I was simply giving him some constructive criticism. <laughs> Oh boy! Some pointers mm-hmm. for his next one. I thought mm-hmm. he did an excellent job. But <laughs> you know, Yo, you know what's funny? as the wife, I'm supposed to be able to yep. clean, yeah. clean, yeah. that, clean that shit up. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's funny? My, my my boy, my boy, he listens in every week. Now my man love him. El Plaga. Oh, El Plaga. I mean, love him to death. Mm-hmm. Plaga was like. Yo, I know he get all the black business <laughs> because he can relate. Yes, Let me tell you something. Yes, yes. very down that. to earth, very humble. If, if Maurice came to, if my house burned down, and Reese came to my crib and he God started forbid. talking to me, you know, well, God forbid, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. he started talking to me at, in a language that I knew. Mm-hmm. Oh, yo, bro, you got my business. And that's Be- important. It is. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. It is. Because you never want to talk over people or talk it, down to people. Yep. Mm-hmm. You want to talk to them and you want them to, because I think that most of us, we are, I know me, I am, uh, I tend to gravitate towards people I can relate to. Mm-hmm. There you go. You may and not, there you may go. not be yep. in my struggle, but you can understand my right. struggle. And I think mm-hmm. that's another reason why I created this brand because Specifically for my black mothers. I am open to all races and ethnicities. Don't get me wrong. But mm. I am a black woman. 
I'm yes. a black mom. Mm-hmm. And, and I had, your mom is on. Hold on, wait. Speaking your of mom. mom is on. Hey, hey, mom. Hey, mom. Hey, mom. Hey, mom. Hey, mom. Hey, mom. <laughs> Where mom at? I see you, mom. Uh-uh. She watching her baby. <laughs> Y'all is crazy. Whoa. <laughs> your mom is, listen. Your daughter, hey, mom. She is amazing. I, I'll be over Sunday dinner. Because I came from her. Look, you know? I, I know Look, I'll be over right. Sunday. Can you, don't fall far from the church. Can your mom cook? Yes. Oh, I'll be on, you got some kids over here, mama. Mom. Mm-hmm. I'll be over mm-hmm. Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now, so let me ask you. So can you explain to our listeners mm-hmm. what happens if autism goes untreated? Mm-hmm. Are there any, oh, Lord, them oh, Lord moments? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. There's oh, Lord moments when... Your child is diagnosed. So I feel like if a child continues to get pushed through the school district system, the school system. As they often do. um, You're going to, I I personally, as a social worker, I have seen a 13-year-old young man that was completely nonverbal, had no, not even the fact that he was nonverbal, he had no communication method. He couldn't use pet cards, which are cards with pictures oh, on them. Wow. That that's the first that's the first stage of speech when you're working with a nonverbal child. Mm-hmm. They they try to get them to use picture pet cards. Okay. Okay. He couldn't even use a, a communication book with pet cards. He couldn't write. He couldn't read. He wow. couldn't speak. And he was in the hospital. And he was being violent and aggressive. Because over the years, he was because he never could not, diagnosed. Could you imagine being not thirteen being able years to old say anything? and your head is killing you, mm-hmm. and you can't yeah. tell nobody that, mm-hmm. or you're hurting, wow. or you're feeling away, or you're frustrated. I, I personally, when I am at those moments of like, oh, I'm just really feeling overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. I tried my best to put myself in my kids' shoes and imagine how they feel um, inside their bodies, not being able to calm themselves down or articulate Mm -hmm. how they feel or what's going on with them. As hard as it is to help them sometimes, it has to be a thousand times. It is a thousand times harder for the individual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, But I know that it happens and it's unfortunate, but the the downside to not being diagnosed early is detrimental to not only the person, but to society, because that person is going to grow up and nine times out of 10, they're going to be doing things because they don't have the understanding. They don't mm-hmm. have the skills. They don't have the mm-hmm. supports. They don't yep. have a team. They don't have a behavior specialist. They don't right. have a social worker. They don't have a family. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. a lot of times yeah. um, some autistic adults have to live with their family um, because they can't like they can't do certain things on their own. Or maybe they can, but it's just safer. Yes. But they mm-hmm. have yeah. assistant living programs. They have people who can I mean, there's plenty of autistic people who live completely independent. So I just think that the earlier, the better, because if you don't, it's just the it, the, the it's a world of difference. If you take a child that was diagnosed at three and given all these supports intensively mm-hmm, mm-hmm. versus a child that never was diagnosed, went on to be a teenager, grew up and now they're in a work environment and they're expected to deal with people mm-hmm. like humans are weird and annoying anyway <laughs> <laughs> yes we are yes. you know what i mean yes like, we are humans are draining <laughs> and they're weird and if you if you don't have the social skills or the verbal language to mm-hmm. express that then it's just a recipe for a disaster and, the, the, and and there go you said earlier you know they be they are incarcerated. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Or dying out in the street. Yes. You know? Homeless. Homeless. Rob- yes. You know, just, it, 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 it's just super. It's, it's hurtful. It? Um, well, well, listen, I, I am. Unfortunate. I'm, I'm feeling mm-hmm. kind of down. Because mm-hmm. mom said she wasn't cooking Sunday. So, <laughs> you said, uh, I'm not cooking Sunday. That's sorry. My sister. Oh, wait a minute. Dawn. Hey, Sissy Poo. Yeah, she was a hey, social sis. worker for CFCF for many years. She just oh, retired. She's, she's retired. Oh, everything. Let me get, I mean, 
Get up for yes. sis. Get up for sis. That's she's cool. seen everything. Yeah, yeah. And, and she's watching too. <laughs> Every, everybody get the stalker song. Yeah, everybody get the stalker song. <laughs> so now, now I'm about to hit her with the true or false questions. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I like to ask my guests a couple of true or false questions Let's about go. their Let's profession. Go. So I can hit you with those. Let's go. All right. All right. So is ADHD part of autism? True or false? False. False? Okay. It's a separate diagnosis. It is? Mm. There are people, you can have autism and ADHD. Mm-hmm. That's Word. very common. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yes, but they are not the same. Mm-mm. Okay. Oh. Second question, number two. Number two. Is autism a disability? I mean, technically. Technically, it's a disability. Yes, it is a disability. Um, You are... If your child is diagnosed with autism, you have access. It opens up mm. a world of resources. Mm-hmm. I oh, always say okay. that it's better to get your child diagnosed early because they could get Medicaid, they could get SSI, mm-hmm. they can get ABA therapy, mm-hmm. um, which is a really, really intensive therapy that makes a really good difference. My daughter received it for a year and she went from having a few words to she's just. She won't stop. Now, hey, go. On. <laughs> she won't stop. That, that's peanut right there. So <laughs> talk herself right to sleep. <laughs> All right. Question number three. Number three. Can stress during pregnancy cause autism? I don't know. Oh, that's a good say, one. Lord. Is that a good one? That's a that good is one. A good one. <laughs> <laughs> Give yourself the hand. Give yourself the hand. I mean, say, play some, play some. Really? Is that damn hey, 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 We're hey, not going hey, anywhere. Hey. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm gonna ask some questions. Go on. I, I, I going to say no because. I had a very stressful uh, first pregnancy. Oh, were? And mm. my daughter is. Was it from my boy? Him. No, hell no. <laughs> no, no. He didn't stress me out at all. Oh, he didn't? No, that's no. how I know it's not true. The she one said I was, from the, her oldest daughter. Oh, the first, the the oldest. first yes. one. Oh, yeah, yes. child, my first oh, okay. oh, the first. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Yeah. But I mean, I can't say 100%, but in my experience, I'm going to say no. Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay. All right. All right. Question number four. Number four. Can autistic people cry? Absolutely. My kids cry all the damn time. <laughs> <laughs> are, we, are you kidding me? <laughs> what? <laughs> Next. That all was right, easy. That, that was it. That was easy, easy one. That was easy. All right. <laughs> number five, the fifth and final number one. Number five. Can autistic people love? <sighs> you trying to make me cry. I ain't gonna do it. I'm not. No, you know. Come on. Do it. Come on. Let it go. I'm not gonna do Stizzy, it. Stizzy, give me, uh, give me, give me the tissues. Uh-uh, no. Give me the tissues. Listen, no. Mm. My children are loved. My children mm. are loved. Yes. And they are the most loving. Their teachers will tell you. Anyone who has met my children, they are the definition of love. They just love. They're so loving. They love yes. affection. They love to kiss and hug and touch. My kids are amazing. And they give me the strength. Mm -hmm. They have sparked a light in me that Mm -hmm. I never Mm -hmm. even saw this version of myself. Mm -hmm. They did this for me. So they are love. They are they are amazing. That's and the environment that's y'all yeah. provide for them. Yeah. That's the that's yeah. mommy and daddy right there, all yeah. in them. You they know don't what got I'm no saying? choice because we kiss and love up on them all day. Yes, but they I love, love my son. My son, oh, he's such a joy, and he has he has such an amazing spirit. All his teachers love him. All his classmates. <laughs> I'm like young boy, like. <laughs> and my daughter, she has the. The best smile. She loves to Aww. sing. We call That's her our little up. songbird. That's my girl, right and there. She just <laughs> they they they're just amazing. So absolutely, absolutely. That's why I never I never understand when people say you know well oh they probably got a hard time you know with affection. Please, my kids they loved 
They love affection. They love the kiss and hug. My daughter is so gentle with like babies and yeah. little kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, if she see a baby in the park, forget about it. She's going to help her up the slide. <laughs> yes. She would, she would have been an amazing big sister, but mm-hmm. it ain't going to happen. So over it. Been there and done that. Yeah. Sure. I got the two. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Hold on, wait, wait. What mom say? Mom, what mom say? Mom said. Uh, all the time, and yes, my babies love me. <laughs> That's what Mama said. Yeah, what, what, then, what's this? And then Sissy Poo said, "Those soft kisses and hugs, mm-hmm. she love them." <laughs> they I are. know that's right. <laughs> oh man, listen, yeah. I, I love this interview right here. Yes, this is amazing. Yeah. So, all right, we're gonna hear some closing questions. Okay. You know, what I mean, I don't, I'm like, damn. Time flies. Mm-hmm. All right. So what are your plans for Autamazing in the future? Well, my, my short term goals, I created a mom to mom support group mm-hmm. that is meeting for the yeah. first time. <laughs> Thank you. It's meeting for the first time on Saturday, May 20th at one Ooh. o'clock. Okay. I've been very... I've been working on this for a while. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's going to be located at 7727 Germantown Avenue, Suite 100. Okay. And you can RSVP with me, Charvon. I will. Mm-hmm. I will put that put in all the, that information in the in description. There. Okay. Yes. 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 Mm-hmm. yes. So that is my first community engagement project that I'm working on. I just wanted to create a space for moms to come where they can let their hair down a little bit. It's an hour, hour and a half, Mm -hmm. you know, for themselves just to talk about their autism journey, get some resources Mm -hmm. from other moms, just build a sisterhood of moms who get it. Sometimes you just need to be around people who get it. Mm -hmm. And a lot Mm -hmm. of times you don't have access to that because everybody is just, you know, doing their own thing Mm -hmm. that you just need to slow down, breathe, and find your tribe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Mm-hmm. that's my goal for that. And I don't just want it to be a support group. I want us to do different things, like different things that help me with my life, with my life and to keep my yeah. stress down, like yoga, meditation, spirituality, mm-hmm. walking, giving back to the community. I want us, I want the moms to do things in the mm-hmm. community. Mm-hmm. And I also want to, long term, I want to have my own nonprofit where yes. I have a brick and mortar where I have my own psychologist and social workers yes. that can do these evaluations. Readily on hand. Mm-hmm. Yes. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh. That is amazing right there. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yes, that is amazing. I, I, I love Charvon. it. I love it. Yes. What about the dads? What about them? Like, you can't, you can't leave us dads out. Listen, you know, <laughs> man, man, right? they ain't leaving us Listen. dads. They ain't leaving us dads out. Reese, oh, no. Reese you gotta, you, you, Maurice, yeah, I told Reese, him. you gotta get, st- you gotta get it popping with the brothers because it's so many the, programs you know, for the women, but it's nothing for the men. But you know, I do know of one, See, one out of group twenty thousand that I met. I met this particular person in. Mm-hmm. When I was volunteering over the summer, he has a basketball program for children on the spectrum because Ooh, he has a son. That's good. That's good. He has a son. I think he's twenty in his late twenties, mm-hmm. and he started it then for his son, and it's just continued to grow over the years. And he has a dad a dad group. But you're right; it's not a lot, and mm-hmm. yeah. that's why I created this group because I couldn't find a group like that I was looking for. So I right, decided right. to create. Be mm-hmm. be the change you want to see. Mm-hmm, so I created mm-hmm. because this group is not just for the moms. It's for me. It's yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah. for yeah. me just as much as it's for them. Exactly. Because I need the support. I need mm-hmm. the the sisterhood. I need you know just someone to say hey you know when I'm having a bad day or just somebody who gets it. Yes. I need the mm-hmm. I need it just as much as they need it. Mm-hmm. So I put my I. It is very personal to me because this brand is my children. It is my babies. Right. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I do take it very seriously. I put my blood, sweat, and tears into this. And I just hope and pray that 
someone gets something out of it because I really am not concerned about the numbers. If one mom shows up, that's yeah. that's, that's, that's enough. That's it. I, yeah. Yeah, but she I know exactly. exactly. Mm-hmm. Because it'll be for who it's meant to be for. Mm-hmm. Because what's for me is for me. And mm-hmm. I'm not worried about the numbers or mm-hmm. who come or who doesn't come. Mm-hmm. Whoever I already had five moms who have RSVP and I'm like stunned. I'm blown away by that. But mm-hmm. I just know that it's gonna continue to grow because my intentions are pure mm-hmm. and I really do want to be a blessing to these moms because this journey, like I said, it is lonely. It is isolating. Mm-hmm. And if you don't live it, you just can never get it. Yes. Oh. And it's yes. no slight yes. against anyone. Yeah. It's just one of those things. Mm-hmm. So everyone needs a supportive village. And I have created my own outside of my family with different professionals who have worked with my children. Mm -hmm. My daughter's ABA therapist was just over our house yesterday bringing her a birthday gift and we was outside chilling on the porch eating Chinese food. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) Fried wings and rice. (laughs) But she she hasn't worked with my daughter in over five months. Mm -hmm. She stopped working with her five months ago, but I love her dearly mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. But she still, loves my daughter. She's still there. She's yes. still in, in, in your I call life. her I call her my daughter's godmom and she be cracking up. But <laughs> when you find good people in this in this community mm-hmm. who is not just doing it for a check, check. like yes, they really yes. have a passion for it. Yes. You know, she mm-hmm. has a teenage sister who has autism, so she gets it. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. she treated my daughter so gently and so lovingly that I had no we had no choice but to love her. And she's like a little sister to me. She's 25. She's in graduate school. Shout out to T. Go T. Nah, man. Let me get, get, yes. get, 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 get some love. Give her some love. And look, and mom says she coming too. Yeah, mom. So my mom. Mom um, coming. I have yep. a brother who Aww. he'll be 18. He has autism. My mom adopted him when he was five. And he's just another testament to never letting people tell you what your child will never do. Because when he came to us, He was in pull-ups. He wasn't Mm -hmm. talking. He wasn't Mm -hmm. trained. They said, oh, he'll never do this. He'll never do that. Mm -hmm. He's going to be 18. He gave the toast at Maurice's and I wedding. Mm. He is an amazing artist. He's a cartoonist. He has, he's working on his cart, on his, uh, his cartoon book. Mm -hmm. He is funny as ever. (laughs) I mean. That's what's up. He is hilarious. Maurice picked him up from school one day, and him and Maurice got this thing like you know Maurice is crazy. So they mm-hmm. just they he had they have their little bond. Mm-hmm. And my brother Maurice went started off with his stuff, and my brother was like, Maurice, I just got out of school. I don't. I, I just need. I ain't got time for your shenanigans. Basically, like. <laughs> I ain't got time for you today. I don't got time for this. I don't feel for this. like you today. I just got out of school with these badass kids. You know what I'm saying? And then Maurice was like, I'm sorry, man. You know, my bad. And then because some, you know, a part of autism is they take everything literally. So if yeah. you say, mm-hmm. like, for instance, you know, I hate you, something like mean like that. Like, you know, like some some people say something stuff like that. They're like saying it playfully. Yeah, but they yeah, they, but they, they don't pick up on sarcasm. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So okay. He didn't pick up that Maurice was being sarcastic when he was like that. He was like, he thought he hurt Maurice's feelings. And he was like, Oh no, man, I didn't mean it like that. And it was really sweet. But he really is the sweetest soul. Mm-hmm. And that's what's up. I always Maurice and I always say this. We say if our kids grow up to be to be like my brother, then we're we'll be happy because yeah. he's yeah he's the best. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm, so so wait, so so where mm-hmm. can our listeners and watchers go to find information on Alt Amazing? You can check me Run out it. on IG at Alt Amazing one word. I'm on Facebook Alt Amazing one word, mm. and you can also email me at Alt Amazing at gmail and I will also link it in our description. Yes. When you look at this video, so you can. And also, can find the it info there. for my parent, mom to mom group, is still time to RSVP. So, yeah, hit me up. And we could purchase t shirts off yes, of that. T shirts, t shirts, t shirts, hoodie. I'll also give you the website for that, it's Big Cartel. Oh. But I'm also, I can do in person. Um, orders also. Oh, for real? Okay. Yeah. And I'm, I want a t shirt. I, okay. I want my tight because I want that. 
I'm with that. You, oh, know, you look, look like, like the type. Yeah, look, like, look like the type. I look like I'm husky. Showing his belly. Mm-hmm. His dad. His dad bod. <laughs> All right, I'm cutting the show right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm cutting the show right now. <laughs> that time on my tummy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, partner. <laughs> Why she do me? Jesus, it's ain't all Christ. love. It's all love, <laughs> man. No, I appreciate y'all having me on. This was fun. Oh man, Listen, we had Vincent. a ball with you. Very informational. It was wonderful. Thank and you. I'm just so excited about what God has in store for you and your ministry. I yes. appreciate that so much, sis. I really do. Yes, yes, really do. yes. We were blessed. Yes. Don't make it that way. That's what you put on. <laughs> Really? Hey. Yeah, we got Rigo and Rigo now. That's a shame because I jumped right on there with it. God is blessed. God is blessed. Thank you, Lord. Then he got to play the Messi. It's all about balance. That beat is hot. You can't help it. Thank you, sis. Thank you. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Thank you. Oh, man. Thank you, Kukums. So, wait a minute. Anybody want to shout out before we get out of here? Yes, yes. Well, I want to shout out. some flowers. I want to shout out y'all for having me. Big shout out to this June, this June podcast. My husband, Maurice. Yes. My homie. My, 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 my homie. My partner in crime. I couldn't do this thing without you. Honey. Yes. Mm-hmm. My mother. Hey, ma. Mama Dukes. Slash babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> always, always there when we need her. Mm-hmm. Um, my sisters. <sighs> Being great aunties, yes. you know my family, my my nieces. My oh, nephew, there we you know, go. All of them. Yeah, oh, cool. run it down. That's right. I never, never, never treated my children any differently. Just loving them, mm. and I really appreciate it a lot. That's what that's what I'm talking about. And mm. my community of, there we go. Hold on, wait, of yeah. supporters. Yeah. yeah. There we go. There we go. There we go. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. And I got to shout out VSU one more time. Go Trojans. VSU. There we go. VSU. I love it. Look, she she just had to get that in. Wait. Do it again. Do it again. Let me see. S. I love it. I love it. I love it. They're like, yo, they some damn fools. <laughs> oh, yes. I have to shout out my my older children, Malia, Anna, and Noah. Yes. Hey, y'all. Hey. Awesome parents. Yes. Great, Love great, it. great big sisters and brother. And we appreciate y'all. Love mm-hmm. y'all. So, man. Yo, this, you know, I, I, I love this show right here. I love this show right here. Mm-hmm. It was, it was good. It was yo, good. We take us good. home. Sure, you little joker. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. You really love this song. I get you. I get you. I get you.